The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation, Mike Camping here with Tracy Urban. This young woman started Acme Cleaners TNT in June 2007, uh, Columbus, Ohio. And she has pink hair. For those of you on the podcast that uh, don't see, you just got to take my word for it. Um, <laughs> any questions or comments or anything you want to say about how you got in the cleaning business before we dive into the coaching? Um, yeah, well, I started back in 2007. Um, it was just me. Um, a year later, I was able to hire my husband on full time. And then last year, he had to leave the company. And I hired my daughter because he got hurt. He was injured. He had a TBI. Um, so I hired my oldest daughter. And she didn't like doing it that much. So now my youngest daughter is helping me. Cool. So, well, we, I won't, we won't get into all that, but it's, well, at some point we'll have to talk about why not hire kind of non-family members. But that said, what's going on in your world today that I can help you with? I am trying so hard to get more office cleaning jobs versus residential. All my clients, not all, but 99% of my clients are residential and I have only three office jobs. So we get a lot of people that want to make that switch from residential to commercial and nine times out of 10, they want a different result and they think switching their, their niche is going to solve that problem. So what, and no judgment, just trying to get some clarity. What makes you want to go from residential to commercial? Uh, commercial is so much easier. <laughs> I'm just getting really um, tired of doing residential. <clears throat> Office work is a lot easier. There's no well, the offices that I have. Um, so really quick, is the goal for you to clean or for you to have a team of cleaners? I would eventually like to have a team of cleaners. I would like to get out of it, obviously, and work on the business, not in the business. Okay. So again, if... And there's, please, half our clients are residential, half are commercial. So please don't hear me saying commercial is bad and residential is good or vice versa. That's not the case. What I am saying is solving the wrong problem, solving a different problem isn't going to fix your actual problem. So right. if the real goal, and again, I, even in the, the verbiage, like I would like to eventually at some point, maybe get out of cleaning. Um, if that's a something you actually want to do and are just afraid to go into, I think the real next step is not to switch from, I clean residential and I hate it. And I think if I clean commercial, I'd hate it less. If the goal is to get out of cleaning, let's get out of cleaning. Um, I've, I have, I'll be honest, I've never had a, a residential cleaning company. I only had a commercial. So I don't mm -hmm. know the physical labor that one takes versus another, but I'm, I've been coaching long enough. I think mm -hmm. I don't know that it's a crap ton better. It's not like going from coal mining to sitting behind a desk, right? right. It's cleaning houses during the day to the office during the night. I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses. I don't yeah. want to hijack what you want, but what I hear you saying is, well, let me put words in your mouth. And if I completely miss, yell at me and go, Mike, you're not listening. That's your bad coach. That's not what I want. And we'll all rewind. What I hear you saying is, Mike, I really want to get out of cleaning, but I'm afraid. And I don't think I can. And I think I've got a better chance of moving to commercial than residential, but that's not really what I want. I don't want to clean commercial either. I want to own a business that does cleaning. And if I had employees, I really wouldn't give a crap what they clean just so I don't have to clean. Am I completely making this up or am I tracking where you're at? Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to answer really quick for any of you still wanting to make that change out there. And then I'd like to dive deeper into your actual situation, Tracy. Um, so the, the, the answer is, is that you get commercial the same way you get residential. And people are like, no, it doesn't work because I've tried it and it worked in residential and doesn't work in commercial. So I'll revise to say the right way to get commercial is the same right way to get residential, which is to identify who your perfect prospect is. So mm -hmm. residential is not a perfect prospect. Commercial is not a perfect prospect. Single moms is a prospect. Um, 
married dual income with kids is a prospect. Retired people in a certain neighborhood is a niche or a perfect prospect. For a commercial, that's not a prospect. Car dealerships are a niche or a perfect prospect. Uh, property managers of A-type office buildings in this part of area that have at least a million under a million square feet under management could be a perfect prospect. So we've got to get crystal clear who we want. So if we just go, I don't like residential and I want commercial. It's like going, I don't like the Atlantic Ocean. I want the Pacific Ocean. It's like, well, <laughs> if you're in the middle of them, I promise you can't tell the difference. It's all right. the same thing, right? So we got to get crystal clear on who our actual client is. Then we've got to get crystal clear on the problem that we solve for them. And I promise it's not, they have dirty things and they want clean things. A uh, dual income mom that, you know, that's a professional, married to a professional, living in a $200,000 home with four kids and two dogs has massively different pain than a retired couple that's in their 60s, lives in a small uh, condo and travels a lot, like completely different. They're both residential, just like a chiropractor who's a single practice with 1200 square foot office is wildly different than a hospital. They're both medical. (laughs) If you try to sell a chiropractor with a hospital's pain, you're going to have no luck uh, or success. And if you try and sell a hospital with a chiropractor's pain, you're going to have no success. So the real work is getting crystal clear on exactly who you want to serve, understand exactly what pain you're solving for them. And it's not, they have something dirty. They want clean. They want to feel better about themselves. They want time. They want to feel important. They want um, freedom. They want security. There's a lot of things they want in cleaning, and, uh, right? Cleaning might get them to feel the way they want to feel, but that the way they want to feel is it. And then you message them in a way that makes them understand that you understand the pain. That's it. So that said for you, so there's the quickie on that. We've done hundreds of podcasts on how to get clients if you want to dive deeper into that. That said, we're going to talk with Tracy, but for everyone else out there, I want you to ask yourself the quick... And by the way, guys, gals, the high dollar work that we do as owners is thinking, right? So it's easy just to go, I hate residential. I saw a guy and he's got a commercial and he's rich and famous, so I'm going to go commercial. He seems super happy, right? Did a commercial and it's easy to clean and residential is hard to clean, so I'm going to go do that. That's a superficial response. But the really thinking through what do I really want out of my life first? And then what do I want out of my business? And then what's the next best step? That's the highest paid work we're going to do, but no one wants to do it because it's hard. So let's do that together. So everyone kind of cleaning nation. So A, we can get you some clarity and B, people cleaning nation can go, oh, that's that's the conversation I need to have with myself or with my spouse. Um, so let's start with your life. Right now, you're cleaning all day. You don't like it. Is it more the income? lack? Is it more you feel like you're stuck or is it more the physical drudgery of cleaning every day? What's the big pain you want to solve? It's, yeah, I clean Monday through Friday and my biggest pain, yeah, is the actual physical work. I'm just, I'm tired. Okay. So for you physically getting out of cleaning is the biggest pain? Yes. Okay. So once we ask the right question, it's clear and obvious. Even if I waved a magic wand and said, boom, all your, all your residential clients are gone. You've replaced them all with commercial clients. You're working the same, you're cleaning physically the same amount as just as opposed to eight to five in homes. It's five to eight in, in office buildings. Boom. You'd be like, wait a sec. I'm just as miserable as I was before. <laughs> just, and right. the same, we, haven't, we haven't solved any problems. Okay. So, we, so I asked you money or time, and I heard you say time. I'm not, the, I'm not saying that doesn't mean money is not important, but what I hear, I didn't hear you saying I need more money. I hear you going, I am sick of cleaning houses, correct? Yes. Okay. So that's more important. I would say the real goal would be to replace your income, whatever it is, without you cleaning. So let's, I'll make up a number. Yours could be way more, could be way less. It really doesn't matter. Let's say your company is paying you three grand a month or you're able to take $3,000 a month from it. But that sounds a lot and feels a lot like a cleaning job, not like a business, because if you stop cleaning, that $3,000 a month goes to nothing. Right. Right. So like that's a job, right? (laughs) Any job we all have, if you go do the work that they're paying you for, you will get paid. If you don't, you don't get paid. Uh, Unless you work for the government, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Um, So my goal would be, what's the quickest way to get out of clean? What's the quickest way to replace that $3,000? And again, I understand your number could be more, could be less. What's the quickest way to replace that $3,000 of income? That's not really income. It's a job. You have a bunch of cleaning jobs. I clean for you. You give me 200 bucks. I clean for you. You give me 150 bucks. I clean for you. You give me this many bucks. And I clean all day. And at the end of the month, I got 3000 bucks. <laughs> that's the, that's the trade that I've made. So I would focus 100% of my time on creating systems to get out of cleaning. And that's really it. 
So again, I don't want to get too into your finances kind of on the podcast in front of everybody, but if you had to take a income decrease for one to three months um, to get out of cleaning, would that stress out your life and finances? And yes, as a financer, I just want to know where we're dealing. Yes. yes. Okay. No problem. So see how we're asking questions. Doesn't freak us out. Like, oh, I guess I'll just give up. I'm like, okay, we just need to know because there's there's two paths that you can go. Not just you, Tracy, but everybody that's talking to us. There's the probably quicker and a little easier, which means I'm risking losing some clients or losing some revenue, right? Because the quickest way to get out of cleaning is to hire people. But right. If, if you use the 50% cost of goods sold that we coach and you're making $3,000 and say you're actually making 3,500, but after gas and rags and cleaning insurance and blah, 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 you keep three grand. Um, well, if you hire cleaners, well, now instead of three grand, you keep 1,500, right? Because right. it should cost you about half. And if you're like, I can live on 15, not till the end of time, but I can live on 1,500 for a month, maybe two, three, if things got really crazy, right? All we have to do is hire. And once you hire a team, Obviously, you're down to 1500 And I'll be honest, most of the people we work with replace that income within a month, six weeks at the most. Um, but if you're not working with us and you're like, I, I, I don't want the pressure of you going, I have to replace it in six months right, or in six weeks or in four weeks, that's too much pressure. So, And especially if you're doing it on your own, it can take you a longer time or maybe not happen at all. So if the risk factor is such that you're like, can't just hire people right now. Here's how you do it. You, you sell one or you sell um, two and you get rid of one. That's all you got to do. So if your average client is 300 bucks a month, each one you sell is about 150 bucks in, uh, or wait, is this, I think you sell one and get one. So I think you sell two, get one. So what you're going to do, if you're making three, so let's just pretend that for this, for this example, your income is 3,500, your overhead's 500, and you're cleaning and keeping all 3,000. The next job that you sell shouldn't take any more overhead. It's going to be, but now you have three, 30, 30, uh, 3,300, right? If your average job is 300 bucks. Well, if you give, yeah, it's sell one, give two. Sorry. I haven't gone through this one in a while. Sell one, give two. So the cool thing is if you sell that job and you have someone else clean it of that 300 bucks, you make $150. But the goal at this point isn't to increase our income. It's to stop cleaning. So we're going to sell that one and we're going to give two because that one, we're going to give that 150 bucks uh, that we have $150 in profit as opposed to taking that profit. We're like, Oh, I'm going to give it to the, to this lady. So now I'm going to give that the new person, two jobs, your $3,000 will stay exactly the same, but you'll clean, you'll, she'll be cleaning two jobs and you'll be cleaning one less. So every time you sell a job, the new person gets that job plus one more. It just takes longer, but your income will stay exactly the same as long as you're selling an average of 300 bucks and that's your average job. So that's the way to do it. But the magic is in clarity, right? If you think you want to move to commercial, but you're, you really want to get out of cleaning, I can give you all the training in the world how to move to commercial. And then six months from now or however long it takes, you'll be at commercial going, well, I'm still cleaning and I'm miserable. So for everybody, including Tracy, I want to encourage you to spend time, and this is another place a coach can come in and get really clear on what you really want and make sure you're solving the actual problem, not the emotional problem, right? So your emotional problem is I'm sick of all these, you know, homeowners telling me what to do and working all day and blah, 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 blah. That's the emotional problem, which is fine. That's a real thing. But the underlying problem is I physically don't want to clean anymore. So we want to make sure we solve that, not just escape, like whichever. All right. Questions, comments, or remarks? No, I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, trying to think of anything else. So for everyone else out there, what I want you to do is don't start with, I'm stuck. I want to grow. I want to make more money. I want to get more clients. I want to have more. A lot of times people go for revenue, but again, they don't take the time to get crystal clear on what they want. The way that you can do that is start with, and again, it takes a little longer. It's a little harder, but we get paid for the hard work of thinking but we don't want to do that hard work. We want to just jump. It's a lot more fun to just be like, oh, I'm just going to call a commercial guy and ask if, he'll, if I can give a bit, which is fine. It's just often not going to get you the result. So most of us start with revenue. How can I grow? How can I grow? How can I grow? I don't want to make more money. I want to make more money. Without asking myself, is that the number one problem? Like I appreciate Tracy when I go, is it the money or is it the working? There's no wrong answer, but for Tracy, it was the working. So if I tried to help her make more money, 
great. Here's Tracy. Here's how you can get 10 more clients. The problem is she'd make more money, but she's like, great. Now I'm working 60 hours a week as opposed to 50 and I'm even more miserable. Like, and you know, being more miserable at 3,500 bucks in profit as opposed to 3,000 isn't this, then you burn out because you can't do anything and then your profit goes to nothing because you're out of business. So if we try and solve the wrong problem, it's, it's rarely will work short term and it's never going to work long term. So don't start with revenue. Don't even start with profit. Believe it or not, start with your life. So everyone wants to start with the business and they typically want to start with revenue. How can I make more money? Um, revenue, right? I'm, a, I'm doing five grand a month. I want to do 10 grand a month. Um, but the problem is lots of people go from $5,000 a month in revenue to $10,000 a month in revenue, but the profit, the amount they keep the same stays the same, or it'll go up 500 bucks and they're working three times as hard for a nickel extra. So there's nothing wrong with money. We like money, but you got to be crystal clear about what you want. And if revenue is not profit, I've run multi-million dollar businesses that had years of no profit, that sucks. I've run very small businesses that were wildly profit, right? So I'd rather have a $400,000 business that makes $200,000 a year in profit than a million dollar business that makes no money in profit. So we want to start with, and believe it or not, before we even get to the business, we get to our life. So what I would tell you, Tracy, is get with whoever is important in your life and go, what do we want our life to look like? How do we want to spend our time? Is the house that we're in the house that we want? Do we want a condo, a house? Do we want to live here? Do we want to live in the same city as our business? Do we want to travel? How much time do we want to spend? And what do we want to do? And where do we want to do it? Then we go, what will that cost? Right? Like, you know, well, right now we're in this house and it's 1500 bucks a month in mortgage. We want to be in that house and it's $3,000 a month in mortgage. Okay. Well, that's pretty easy to do. We got old junky cars that break down all the time. We want a new car and that would cost us much. Um, we go on no vacations and we want to go on two vacations and that's going to be five grand each. So 10 grand a year. Um, and the ability, obviously, if you're like, well, every time, if I don't have any cleaners and I go on a week long vacation and I don't make any money because I'm not cleaning, then we need to solve that problem too. So you want to start with the time and money problem. What do we want our life to look like time-wise? What do we want to do? Where do we want to do it? With whom do we want to do it? Once we solve that problem, then we go, how much will that cost? So everyone, for some reason, wants to make a million dollar business and then we're like 10 grand a month of profit, which is weird because a million dollar business should actually be making like $200,000 a year in profit. But for whatever reason, there's that ego thing of, I want a million dollar business. No, you don't. You want to feel the way you think you'll feel if you had a million dollar business. Right. But you can have a million dollar business and feel broken, stressed, and miserable because you're not making any money. Um, you can have a half a million dollar business that you make 10 grand a month on and don't have to do any work and can travel the world and feel amazing. So we want to get crystal clear on why do I want a million dollar business? And if we're honest, like, well, if I had a million dollars, then I'd be rich. But that's just, that's still what does rich mean, right? Like, oh, I'd have all the money in the world. Like, really frustrating when I coach people like, oh, I don't want to put a cap on myself. I'm like, what goal? Where do you want to be in a year? Oh, I don't want to put a cap on myself. The sky's the limit. It's like, well, for the last seven years, you've made no growth and you're making 2,800 bucks a month. So let's put a cap. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're, you're, you're running the risk of hitting this magical cap of like, oh, I don't, I don't want to say 200,000. It could be 500,000. It's like you made $3,200 for the last 17 months. Like let's, let's, let's have some, let's have some, let's have some pride here. So you want to start with your life. How do I want to spend my time? Where do I want to spend my time? With whom do I want to spend my time doing what? Then we go, okay, there's going to be some amount of money that that requires. Vacations cost money. Houses cost money. Cars cost money. College costs money. But it's not, I don't want to put a cap on it. That's just saying, I don't want to do the hard work of thinking, right? So, well, the house we want would cost $2,813 a month for mortgage and cable TV. I'm old. Netflix, whatever you want to do. Uh, air conditioning, trying to think of what else houses need, high speed, whatever it is, 2850 bucks. That's that's what that's going to cost. All right, the cars are going to cost me 800 bucks for insurance and gas and whatever all that is. All right, we want to take two trips. That's going to be five grand. You know, all right, got it. So we need 87,400 bucks a year, whatever the case is. Don't just say 100 because it sounds like me, because people really go, people that haven't made $100,000 a year go, oh, if I had $100,000, I'd be rich. Or if I had a million dollar business, I'd be rich. Try and make it in and give it a bunch of the government, see what actually happens. Um, <laughs> So you want to do the math and feel like I know what my goal is and I'm connecting it with not just if I had a million dollars, I'd be quote unquote rich. But if my business made, this is the life that I want. So we start with the life that we want. Then we figure out how much time and money you need, right? So with the vacation, if you want to take two vacations uh, a year for 21 days total, that costs time and money. You need 20, probably three days because you're going to have to fly and do all that sort of stuff. So you need that time freedom and you need the money. So first we start with our life, then we figure out what the time and money cost is. Then we get the time and money cost. 
then for the, the money, you exit by five, right? If you're like, I need eight grand a month, then you need a forty thousand dollar a month business, right? Because you're gonna you're gonna go for twenty percent profit. Then you can start going, great. How do I get there? But we start with, and again, had you started that, you'd have started with, even if it's only five thousand dollars a month. I have no idea. Just we'll call it six, right? Say your magic fake number now is three. You want to get to six, and that will do all the things that you want. But you don't want to be cleaning. Right. So that's the time and money. So I go, what do you want to do during the day? What's the sixth grade going to do? Oh, I travel. Okay. Well, if you travel, you're not going to be cleaning. Oh, I want to pick up my kids from school and drop them off. Okay. But then you won't be cleaning. So you can't just focus on the money. It's got to be the time and money. So we reverse engineer it. Most people start with the business and go, I want to make more revenue. To what end? They don't even know. And they make more revenue and they're miserable. We want to start with the life that we want and then figure out the time and money that that needs, that we need to create that, to have that life. And then we create the business that will create that time and money. Then we start answering questions like, is the fastest route to that time and money freedom commercial or residential? Um, is within commercial and residential, which niche would it be? And for you, Tracy, because you've already got residential clients, the fastest route to both the time and money freedom, I promise you is residential, right? Because you're going to have to start all over with commercial. Um, so the big thing I want you guys to get is start with the life that you want, distill that into time and money that you need, distill that into profit that you need the business to, to create, then you can distill that into revenue you want the business to make. But you, you, everyone starts with revenue for the business. That's the wrong place to start. All right. All right. right. Now, that's all I got. Questions, comments through to Mark? Are you feeling good? No, that's, that, that's great. I, I love it. Thank you. Cool. So, Clean Nation, if you would like more of this, we've got, I don't know, 700 podcasts. I've written two books. All the information is at growingcleaningcompany.com. The big takeaway for today, and again, don't leave the, the scene of kind of a breakthrough without actually taking action. So the action for today is first, start with the life that you want, then figure out the help that you need. And if you get to the life that you want and you know the money and the time freedom that you're going to need to create that life, and you'd like some help, now you go to growmycleaningcompany.com and you can look at the specific podcast that you need as opposed to just going to a podcast going, how do I grow? But you don't know what that means, right? So the more specific your goal is, the more specific help you can find and you'll leverage your time a lot better. So check it out now, growmycleaningcompany.com. Everything you need to any of those problems is going to be there. I'll see you there. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.